execution now calls rubber, Ely Yule. Mr. Robert, Mr. Yule, can you please tell us, just in your own words, what happened on August 21st? Well, Saturn, I was coming in from the woods with a lot of candlemen, and I heard my eyes screaming as I got the fans. So uh, I dropped the candlemen and ran as fast as I could. Uh, And then I run up to the window, and I seen him with my Maela. Now, what do you do when you saw the defendant? I run around the house to get him, but he ran out of the front door just ahead of me. I saw who it was all right. Then I run into the house, and poor Maela was laying on the floor falling. Then I run from Mr. Tate as fast as I could. Thank you, Mr. Yu, the witness. Did you call a doctor for your daughter, Mr. Yu? Was in no need to. I've seen what happened. All right. Now, you heard the sheriff's testimony. Do you agree with this assessment of Mayla's injuries? Uh, I hold with everything Ted said. Can you read and write, Mr. Yu? Yes, sir. Well, will you write your name and show us, please? You're left-handed, Mr. Hill? What's that got to do with it? I'm a God-fearing man. You were trying to take advantage of me? Tricky liars like Aragus Fringes always trying to trap you up. Thank you, Mr. Yule. You may be seated. We call Mayela Pilot Yule. Mayela, please now tell us what happened. Well, sir. I was on the porch and then he came along and you see there was this old ship robe in the yard. So I said, come here boy and bust up the ship robe and I'll give you a nickel. So we came in the yard and I go in the house to get him a nickel and I turn around and before I know it, he was on me. I fought and hollered but he had me around the neck. He hit me again and again. And the next thing I knew, Papa was in the room, standing over me, hollering, who done it? Who done it? Thank you. The witness, Atticus. Is he probably good to you, Miss Mayor? Does he treat you well? He does, tolerable. Except when. Except when he's drinking? When he's riled, has he ever beaten you? My pa's never touched a hair in my head in my life. I see. All right. Now, he asked Tom Robson to chop up a, what was it now? A ship A ship a road. Right. Was this the first time you asked him to come on to the place? Yes, it was. All right. Now, we identify the man who raped you, please? I will. That's him, Yonder. Tom, stand up. Let Miss Mayo have a good long look at you. Here, Tom. Catch us, please. Very good. Now, I want you to do it again, and but can you catch with your left hand, please? I can't, sir. Why not? I can't move my left hand at all, sir. What happened to your left hand? When I was 12, I got caught in the cotton jam and tore all my muscles loose. Thank you, Tom. Maybe you see Is this the man who raped you? It most certainly is. How? I don't know how he done it, but he done it. Now, Miss Miller, you have testified that the defendant caught you and took advantage of you. You didn't say he snuck up behind you and knocked you out cold. What you said was that you turned around and there he was. Would you like to revise any part of your testimony? I got something to say, and then I'm going to say no more. He took advantage of me. If you fine, fancy gentlemen don't want to do nothing about it, and you're all yellow, taking liars, cowards, a lot of you, your fancy ass don't come to nothing. You may have you miss me, yellow, and it don't come to nothing, Mr. Finch. <laughs> Yeah.
the defense calls Tom Robinson to the stand. Tom, were you acquainted with Miss Mela Violet Yule? Yes, sir. Have you ever gone onto the property? Yes, sir. How many times? Well, lots of times. It seems like every time I pass by yonder, she always have a little something for me to do. Chop and kill me, throw more for her. Tom, what happened to you last year on the night of the incident? Well, Mr. Finch, I was headed home as usual that evening. And when I passed at UL's place, Miss Miela was on the porch lap. She said she had a door to be fixed. Let me come inside. So I went inside and I looked at the door. And I said it was all right to me. And then she shut the door in my face. All the time I was wondering why it's so quiet like. And I realized there ain't a child in the place. So I said, Miss Mel, where the children? She said, they all going to town to buy ice cream. That took a whole slap you. Save her seven nickels, but she done it. Now they all go in town. Then what did you say, Tom? I said, I best be gone. There's nothing I can do. And she said, yes, there was. I said, what? And she said to step on that chair yarn and get that box off the top of that chipper rope. So I done as she said. As I got off my chair, next thing I know, she had her arms around my legs. Scared me so bad, I knocked over the chair. That's the only furniture, the only thing that's stubborn in the house. It's fixed when I left. What happened after you turned the chair over, Tom? Well, as I got off the chair and sort of turned around, she grabbed me around the waist, reached up, kissed me on the face. Said she's never kissed a man before, and she might as well kiss me. She told me to kiss her back. I told her, I got, let me go. She, she ran for the back against the door. Next thing I know, outside of her, it's you all, you know, That's a damn lie. Are you gonna take his word against me? What kind of man do you think I am? I'm sorry, Tom. But this is important. Please continue. What happened next? Mr. Finch, I don't know. I was running so fast, I don't know. Tom, did you rape me on the you? No, I didn't, sir. Did you harm her in any way? I didn't, sir. No further questions. Your witness, Governor. Robertson, you're pretty good at busting up chief of ropes, killing with one hand. Are you strong enough to choke the breath out of a woman and sling her to the floor? I never done that, sir. Were you strong enough to? I reckon. Now, why were you so anxious to do that woman's chores? Well, it seemed like she didn't have no you didn't have nobody with Mr. Yule and seven children on the place. You did all this work from sheer goodness, boy. You're a mighty good fella, it seems. You did all this work for not one penny. Well, like I said, I felt sorry for her. It didn't seem like she had nobody. You felt sorry for her? A white woman. You felt sorry for her. No more questions. Take your time. Thanks. Gentlemen, I'd like to use my remaining time to remind you that this case is not a difficult one. There is circumstantial evidence that leads to Mela Valley Yule having been beaten savagely on the face by someone who led, led almost exclusively with the left hand. Now the defendant sits before you with his only good hand, his right. I have nothing but pity in my heart for the chief witness in this case. She is a victim of cruel poverty and ignorance. But my pity does not extend as far as to allow her to put an innocent man uh, his life at stake. Which she has done in an effort to rid of herself of her own, of her own uh, guilt. Now, I would like to remind you that a court is only as good as each one of you sitting here before me. A court is only as sound as the people who make it up. Now, I'm confident, gentlemen, that you will review the evidence presented before you, come to a decision, and restore this man to his family. In the name of God, 
do your duty. In the name of God, believe Tom Robinson.